Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Matt Shannon. Today's episode, I am in the studio. Last week, I went out into the field and I took some photographs of a waterfall. There's a lot of challenges that I faced because I took photos during the middle of the day and the sun was out and I got a lot of really bright hot spots as well as extreme contrast with the hot spots and the really dark shadows. So there's a few techniques that I did out in the field, uh, like bracketing, I also use a polarizer, I use ND filters to darken the scene and slow uh, my shutter down so I can smooth out the water. The time of year was also a challenge because the water levels were higher, uh, the greenery wasn't you know, fully out. Some of the ferns were still really curled up, kind of like fiddleheads. What I wanted to do was take photos in the field to get the best images in camera and then bring them to the computer to see how I can piece them together to walk away with maybe an outstanding image. And that's what we're here to do today. If you want to see that video of me doing all of those steps in the field, there'll be a link at the end of the video that you can go ahead and click on. So let's dive in. If you're new to this channel, my name is Matt Shannon and I'm a full-time photographer in beautiful British Columbia. From soaring mountains to hidden waterfalls and elusive wildlife to stunning sunsets, I'm excited to film each step of the way. Whether you're here to learn, be inspired, or simply enjoy some stunning visuals, you've come to the right place. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I am using Lightroom and that's where we're going to start. So I've imported all of my images into Lightroom. I'm on the uh, library title here, opened up, and let's shrink our thumbnails. Now to narrow down all the images that I took, I go ahead and I give them a star rating or a color label or color rating. And that helps remove the ones that I don't want to work with narrowing everything down. And let's go over to the development here and look at them individually in their raw form. So we have one, two, three, four, five photos. Okay, next after I've kind of narrowed down the, the five images that I want that have different focuses, as you can see on the last image here. It's a long exposure, but the foreground is super blurry. Uh, but that's okay because another image that I have, it shows the foreground really sharp. So what I first do is kind of treat each one as an image that I, I can try and balance, make the best of by using some of the, the sliders here in Lightroom. And I'm only going to do slight adjustments like this one is mostly for the waterfall that I'm going to brush in in Lightroom. So it's not like I'm going to try and crank the exposure and really balance it out like this. The point of this shot was to get these hot spots perfect so I can brush them in in a layer. So let's go back to this. I mean, we'll bring up the exposure just a tiny bit, but right to there is, is probably fine. Good, let's go to the next one. Now this one's a little bit more balanced. This is where I'm gonna want some of those details in the shadows there. I really like that. Looking lovely. Okay, so there's this long exposure. Let's brighten this up and kind of even it out. That looks nice. The forest looks really nice in the background here. I really like that. Okay, and last but not least, this guy, this needs a little bit more. I'm actually gonna give it a radial filter here in the middle, kind of to brighten it up a tiny bit. Why not do another one? Next, we're gonna highlight all five of these images. Then I'm gonna right click, go up to edit, and then down to open as layers in Photoshop. Let's open up Photoshop. The first thing I'm gonna do, every one of these layers is, is uh, lit. Um, it's got a little eyeball here. And as I turn them off, we'll reveal each image underneath of that. So they're stacked all on top of one another. I loaded them all in. I'm gonna highlight all of them, go up to edit, and then down to align the layers. Actually, before that I do that, you can see that some of them 
are not quite aligned. And you're gonna get that even when you pull focus and stuff, it's, it's gonna shift the images just a tiny bit. So again, highlight all of the layers, go down to auto align layers, and then I'm just gonna hit auto here and uh, it's gonna kinda do its thing. If it doesn't, you can always go, you know, edit and undo, and you can select one of those other programs. But for the most part, we're shooting the same composition, the same frame, slightly off a little bit. Auto will do just fine. The program's really smart. There you go. So we've got a little bit of a no man's land here. And as we remove some of them, there's a little bit more of the no man's land. And that's quite all right. We can crop in a tiny bit or we can use content aware. So that's not a problem. Okay, so now that I have it all aligned and these are just the raw photos, I have them all highlighted again. I'm gonna drag them down to this plus sign and duplicate them. You can also press Command J and it'll duplicate them. So now I have coffee, copies that I can work on and uh, which is great because the next thing I'm gonna do is highlight all of them, go up to edit and I'm gonna go to auto blend layers and then it says stacked stack images. So what this is going to do is it's going to take a sample from each image and uh, whatever is sharp, it's going to have shine through all the layers and stack them together. Whatever is not sharp, it's going to leave out. And it does that through a layer mask. So you can see that there's this other little mask, this other little um, rectangular, you know, um, image here that's next to the original image and it's like a black and white um, mask that's there and you can see anything that's black black is to conceal white is to reveal and so some of them have little specks of white other ones have more white so what it's doing is it's finding anything that's sharp in each layer and it's painting that layer mask white to reveal it and anything that is blurry, uh, that's out of focus, it'll paint black on that layer mask to conceal it. And so that layer mask dictates what that image, uh, how it will be seen or not seen. Does that make sense? And you'll notice that all the bubbles in the water are all marked white uh, to be revealed all the way up through all the layers. And so now we have a merged copy of all five of those images of the sharpest things all stacked together. And the reason why I took all of those bubbles, because bubbles are a bit sharper than just having smooth water, right? So that's why we see so much of that. So the reason why I did that is so now I know from front to back, it's, it's sharp. Great, we got that taken care of. So this will be my base. And now I'm gonna be adding from the original, these five images, I'm actually gonna copy them all over again. I'm gonna highlight all five of these and I'm gonna bring them up above my based base image. And that's the merged stacked image. And I'm actually gonna rename this base image. So now it's like we're starting fresh. We have them all aligned, auto aligned, and we have them all stacked so they're sharp all the way through. So this is where the magic comes in. I'm going to take the little eyedropper and turn off all the images except for my next one that I want to go ahead and add. So the next thing I want to do is create a layered mask to this image. Again, like you saw down where uh, the program stacked the images and it created layer mask. This one I told it to put a layer mask to it and uh, that's because I wanna go ahead and make changes to a layer mask without making changes to the actual image. This layer mask will dictate what the image does or doesn't do, right? So like I said, black is to conceal, white is to reveal. So if it's white, now it's revealed. The image that I have selected that the layer mask is connected to, if it's painted all white, it will reveal that image. If it's painted all black, it will conceal it. So what that will do is that image that I put on top of my base image is now kind of like see-through. You know, you can look down and see your base image. Does that make sense? 
So if I have it concealed right now, it's black, if I take a white paintbrush, so I've got my paintbrush selected, white is selected, and I start painting over this image. So as I paint, I'm now revealing everything because white is to reveal. So I'm painting white, and you can even see over on that little layer mask next to my image, I've just painted a whole bunch of white. And then if I switch, you can press X to switch between white and black for your paintbrush. I have a little button on this fancy pen. And as you paint, you're gonna conceal. So that's how we're doing this process. I'm gonna be having an image that's selected. I'll add a layer mask. I'll make that layer mask black to conceal it. And then I'll paint in what it is that I wanna reveal. And that's the beauty of doing these layers in Photoshop and coming away with kind of a perfect image because we're gonna take the best out of each image that I took to create a super awesome image. Now that we got that taken care of, let's just start working here. So we got black to conceal, white to reveal. So I'm gonna bring down my opacity, my flow, slowly paint in, you know, take things slow, anything too fast, too harsh, and you're gonna see like lines. And all I'm doing is I'm painting in all of that nice, calm, slow water that I really like seeing. I want stuff to be sharp in the foreground, but I like that long, smooth color. Okay, next image. I'm gonna hit the little eye icon and reveal it. Okay, this is another long exposure image and I might like this water more than that water. I don't know, we'll see. So now we want to create a layer mask. White is to reveal. Command I is going to change it to black. Black is to conceal. And so I got my paintbrush. I got white selected. Now I'm just going to paint in. I think I like the white wash a little bit better on that one. I like those little lines. Here's a tip with waterfalls. Even on a dead calm day, you're gonna get wind from the, from the power and the force of that water coming down. There's gonna be airflow that comes off of there. And I can't remember if it was a little bit windy as well here. So from one image to the next, the leaves and the branches are gonna be moving a bit. So whatever the forest is on one image to the next, I wanna make sure I paint all of it or at least to the edge of something that's going to be still like a log uh, that is you know a distinct solid piece of material um, that uh, that I can paint up to. The reason why I don't want to mix and match the bushes back there is because you're gonna have a tree branch or multiple branches from a tree that'll be from one image and if you paint half of that the branches might not line up they might be blowing in the wind and uh, that's something that we want to make sure that we don't we don't want to make black is to conceal white is to reveal let's paint in what i really like here i really like those swirls and i like the softer i like that moss there no nope, that's too dark Beautiful. Okay, so that's my process for going ahead and taking multiple images, stacking them together, aligning them, and then applying kind of the best of each image. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and crop this in. Now that we have it as a kind of a fresh start to what is possibly an okay image, and now I'm actually gonna apply some sort of uh, little techniques to kind of improve this just a tiny bit more. One of them being, say, a curve. So I click down there for an adjustment layer and I can make a change here. I can make an adjustment to the image, say like this S curve, it's a little extreme. Again, I have my layered mask that is all white so it's revealing everything. I do 
Command I to conceal it, make it black. And then I have my paintbrush all loaded up. Let's do 50% for opacity. And then I'm just gonna brush in the waterfall with this adjustment layer. See how it's just applying whatever that layer did to the whole image. It's now just doing to wherever I'm brushing. There, it's brightening it up. It's giving a little bit of contrast. You can even do a little pops of color back there. You can even do little highlights on the moss here. So if we turn that on and off, those, that's the slight adjustment that we did. Even in the water here, the little shine. So that's with the layer mask. And we can apply different layer masks, like uh, we can do vibrance. We can really up the vibrance, say just to make a point here. See how crazy colorful it is if we toggle that on and off with the eye drop. Or in, instead the mask is white, white is to reveal, black is to conceal. So we can do black and then I can just paint in a little bit of the green back here just to make that pop. I don't actually like that. Instead, if I wanted to add a little bit of color, I do a solid color and I'm gonna pick something that's like warm, uh, you know, sunset colors. Click OK and then up here I can change the value of what this color can represent. And we can go down to say screen more transparent if you go down to black if you go up to a brighter color it's uh, less transparent so maybe down to here and we can press ok and this will give us some atmosphere I, you know i really want it in the distance because that's what you would see over a long distance you get atmosphere that's what you see in front of mountains on a warm summer evening when the sun's going down that the mountains are a bit hazy uh, so we go Command I to remove that, and then I'm just gonna brush that in a tiny bit. That's a little extreme. Move some of that back. But see how that brings in just a little bit of atmosphere. We covered aligning all the images. We covered stacking the images so it was sharp from foreground all the way to background. Then I used uh, each image as a layer, and I masked out all of the, the cons of each image to create the best composite. Uh, I removed the hot spots. I was able to give lighting into the shadows. I was able to smooth at the water and create uh, a sharp image from foreground to background. Then I used some layers, adjustment layers, um, to bring some highlights, some atmosphere, and a few other things. Now I wanna switch gears into a single image that I took of this waterfall. Please stick around, take a look at that uh, because it's quite the comparison, not only in time it would take, uh, both in the field, because I only had to take really one shot with a polarizer, um, but also just in the editing. Here's the raw image right here, and uh, actually this is the raw image. I just had to click reset, add some sharpening mask it so only the areas that I want sharpened come through. Let's go up to an adjustment layer, radial, gradient, and add a little bit more highlights there. So far I like the way it looks. I'm going to right click this, go edit in, and I'm going to click edit in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, this is the beta version, so there's a few more tools in here that are slowly um, going to be rolled out into the, the main Photoshop program. And there's some cool stuff that's coming down the pipeline, like uh, using AI. And I could show you a little bit of that, maybe not in this episode, maybe in a future episode. If you're interested in that, leave me a comment down below. Okay, so now I'm in Photoshop. I'm going to add a uh, curve layer. Okay, make another adjustment layer, solid. Let's go with an orange. 
and then I'm gonna change this solid all the way down to a color dodge. Invert my colored mask or my layer mask. And I'm just brushing in some highlights just where the sun is kissing different leaves here. So far it's looking pretty good. There's still more that we can do. Okay, another one, solid color. Go down to soft light. So this is really adding blues to the shadows. Bring down my brush a tiny bit. nice add a little bit more in the waterfall it's a little too blue it's for my liking let's bring it over here a tiny bit there we go okay we'll do one more soft color and we'll go down from normal down to screen invert that Let's add some soft lighting here, some atmosphere. Okay, let's go back to say curves. Up the curves a tiny bit, there we go. that water a little bit brighter look and uh, there you have it um, I'm sure there's a few more uh, things that I can do with this image but uh, let's highlight all of these I'm gonna go command E to bring it down to a single image. Actually, I don't even have to do that. I can keep all the layers, go File, Save. Photoshop will save it, and once it's done, it'll bring it back over into Lightroom. So if you like this content, please give me that thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed, maybe think about subscribing. I'm now gonna put up that uh, video of me taking photos in the field. It'll pop up somewhere up here and you can check that out as well as other wildlife or landscaping videos and uh, yeah i hope to see you on the next adventure see you next time